Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, a breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Time and again, Sergeant Preston has to slug it out with desperados with his bare fist. Just think of Sergeant Preston's great strength and stamina. Then, check up on yourself. Are you eating a good bodybuilding breakfast every morning? When you include Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, you get added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And what a treat to eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Try them tomorrow with milk or cream and fruit. Delicious. November had brought heavy snows and freezing cold to the Yukon Territory. It was early forenoon when one of the men who worked in the express office in Selkirk entered the general store where a small group stood talking around the glowing pot-bellied hey, stove. Hey, Frank. Uh, sure, you're not expecting me to have that order ready so soon that you gave me a little while ago, are you? No, Mike. In fact, I came in to tell you I won't pick up my order until supper time, or maybe later. There's a box over at the express office that I have to take by freight sled to Mr. Mason up at the Indian Creek Bank. It'll take me about three hours each way. Oh, so that's it, huh? No doubt there's a neat fortune in that box if it's going to the head of the bank up there. <laughs> From the rush they seem to be in for me to get it there, it might be at that, Mike. Uh, you can take your time fixing up my order. I'll stop in when I get back. I'll be seeing you later, Mike. So long. So long, Frank. A few minutes after the expressman left the store, two men sauntered out and paused to talk at the foot of the porch steps. What did you signal me to come out here for, Gil? Didn't you hear what that fella said in the store a couple of minutes ago? I wasn't listening. Well, I was. He said he was taking a box from the express office to the head of the bank at Indian Creek. Said it was a rush shipment, and he hinted it was something worthwhile. Hmm. Must be gold or paper money if it's going to the bank. That's what I figure. We'll wait until we see him leave, and we'll get our dog team and follow. But he won't be taking it there alone, will he? From what he said, Jeff, I think he will. And in that case, we'll have that box before he gets very far along the trail to Indian Creek. About an hour later, Gil and Jeff moved along the trail behind their dog team. As the two men rounded a bend in the trail, Jeff pointed ahead. Hey, look, Gil. There he is up ahead. Stop the team. Oh, oh there you go, Whiskey. Go oh, there. Here. Here's your gun. Be sure not to miss. Sure. I won't miss. Yeah, that did it. He dropped. Now let's go get that box. Then we'll turn back, take the trail that goes around Selkirk, and head on down to White Horse. Mush! Mush, you huskies! Get along there! Mush! Meanwhile, about two miles up the trail from where the shooting took place, Bert Andrews entered the small two-room cabin he shared with his wife, Alice, and his eight-year-old son, Tommy. Well, Alice, I'm back without any supplies. Oh, Bert, what, what happened? Uh, the storekeeper at Indian Creek refused me any more credit. 
Where's Tommy? He's in the other room drawing with pencil and paper. Can't hear us with the door closed. Bert, what on earth are we going to do? We're facing the winter with no money, a worn-out claim, and practically no food left. Yes, yes, I know. I guess the only thing left is to sell the dog team, honey. Sell the dog team? But that'll leave us stranded out here, and then what... Golly, I didn't know you were back, Daddy. Why, hi, Tommy. What's that you have there, huh? <laughs> oh, this is something special I drew, just for you, Daddy. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that's fine, son. Uh, some kind of a bird, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Daddy, you ought to know. That's supposed to be a turkey. Uh, uh, a turkey? Uh-huh. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. When old Mr. Carey came by yesterday, he told me so. And remember last year, you promised we'd have turkey this Thanksgiving like other kids have back home. We never have had a turkey. I know, I know, son, but... Well, you see, when I promised you we'd have turkey this year, I, I I, expected I'd make a strike and that we'd be back in the States where they celebrate Thanksgiving. You, you mean we're not going to have any tomorrow, then? Oh, now, please, Tommy, don't bother your father now. But, Mom, Daddy, promise... Now, listen, son, I, I always try to keep my promises to you. But this time, I'm afraid I can't. Even if we had the money, we couldn't find a turkey to buy up here. Now, you run along into the other room and draw some more while your mother and I talk, huh? I wish we never came up here. I guess we'll never have turkey on Thanksgiving like other people do. Oh, Bert, I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize Tommy had set his heart on anything like that. Yeah, we certainly won't have anything to be thankful for. We'll be lucky if we have a few beans tomorrow. Poor kid. Darn it, Alice, there must be something I can do to get some food. I'll be thankful, Bert, for having you and Tommy, regardless of the hardship we're facing. Thanks, honey. That gives me a little courage. I'm going into Selkirk and see if I can talk Mike at the general store into extending our credit. If he turns me down, then... Well, I... I don't know what we'll do. It was early that afternoon when Sergeant Preston, with his great dog, King, was at the constable's office in Selkirk, talking to the constable. Things seem to be fairly quiet around here, Jim. I think I'll be leaving for Dawson tomorrow to report to headquarters. When do you expect to be coming back this way, Sergeant? Why, uh, I don't know exactly, but I guess it won't be very long before we see you again. Oh, Bert Andrews. Right, constable. What brings you here? Something's happened to Frank Allen. Frank Allen at the express office? Yes, sir. Sergeant, this is Bert Andrews. Lives on Indian Creek Trail with his wife and little boy. How Hello, do you Bert. Do, Sergeant? What about Frank Allen? Oh, I, I was on my way to town. I, I found him lying alongside the trail not far from my cabin. He'd been shot. Is he dead? No, sir. Unconscious. His freight sled and dog team were standing nearby. I took him to our cabin, and my wife is doing what she can for him. I came to town to get the doctor, but he's on a call and won't be back for a couple of hours or more. I see. Jim, suppose I go to the cabin with Bert right away. All right. I'll give Frank what first aid I can. Meantime, you stay here and find out from the express office where Frank was heading. Then wait here and bring the doctor out as soon as he gets to town. Right, Sergeant. Let's get going, Bert. I'll get my dog team and follow you to the cabin. Come along, King. <laughs> Within an hour, Bert arrived at the cabin with Preston and King. As the sergeant, with Alice's help, worked over the unconscious Frank, Bert tried to give more details. It must have happened just a short time before I found him. Sir. I know, Bert. Otherwise, Frank might have frozen out there. Give me another bandage, please, Mrs. Andrews. Oh, of course. Here it is. Oh, thank you. There's anything else we can do until the doctor gets here. Do, do you think he'll live, sergeant? I can't say. Right now, he's in rather critical condition. There, that's all I can do. Poor fellow. I hope you catch the one who did this. We passed the place where Bert found Frank. Stopped only a moment, but long enough for me to see a clearly defined trail. Two people with a dog sled had been there besides Frank. Daddy, I wonder if... Look at that big dog. <laughs> Tommy, I... I told you to stay in the other room, son. It's all right, Bert. I forgot about your having a boy. How are you, Tommy? I'm fine, sir. This is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, Tommy. And that's his dog, King. Golly! I like King, and I'm not afraid of him, even one bit, either. King likes boys, Tommy. He wouldn't hurt you. 
Sergeant, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Are you going to have turkey? Are you? Why, no, Tommy. That's an American custom. Tommy, don't bother Sergeant Preston. He has important work to do. Now, you run along into the other room and play, son, huh? Oh, gosh, I suppose I have to. Goodbye, Sergeant. Oh. Goodbye, King. We'll come see you again, Tommy. <laughs> Poor Tommy just can't understand why we can't have a turkey. He's never had it. We just never could afford it, even when we were back home. And now, You see, well... Sergeant, we're short of funds, but we'll make out somehow. I... I'd better take you back to where Frank was shot down. Let's go. A short time later, Sergeant Preston with King and Bert stopped the place where the shooting had occurred. Okay. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Bert, look here. What, Sergeant? Looks as though a dog sled turned here and headed back towards Selkirk. And there are the tracks of two men. Yeah, that's right. Somebody's coming along the trail from town. Yes, they're coming around the bend. Seems to be two men, one riding the sled. The driver's the constable. Must be bringing the doctor. Hello there, Jim. Hi, Doctor must have come back sooner than expected. Looks like it. Oh, 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 you lefty. Oh, oh. The doctor got back soon after you left town. He's over there on the sled. Good. The wounded man's still unconscious at the cabin. Bert, I suggest that you have the doctor transfer to your sled, and then you take him to the cabin. The constable and I have things to talk over. All right, sir. I'll get the doctor on my sled and get going right away. Jim, I'm sure there were two men who shot Frank. Trail's fairly clear. We'll take King and follow it immediately. We can talk while we travel. All right. I found out Frank was carrying a box on his freight sled to the bank at Indian Creek. Oh, then robbery must have been the motive. There's no box on Frank's sled now. I looked it over at the cabin. Let's follow that trail now and try to get those crooks right, before a heavy it. snow comes and kills our tracks. I know this bird's ready to leave with the doctor. See you later, Sergeant. Right, Bert. March! March! Line him up, King. Let's go, Jim. I'm ready. On King! On your husband! We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, tomorrow's a big day. Yes, sirree, there's nothing like Thanksgiving. Good heavens, look what's wandered in a, a turkey. Gee, he's a mighty fine-looking turkey. Pretty wise-looking old bird, too. Almost looks like he could talk. Come, come. Hello there, Jay. But what in the world is he doing here? Huh? Did that turkey say something? I said, hello there. You, you're a talking turkey? What's wrong with that? You you talk, don't you? Well, sure, but I... Well, so do I. Matter of fact, I'd like to get something off my mind. Well, go ahead. Well, well sir, on Thanksgiving, all folks seem to think about is... A, Dinner. Uh-huh. Personally, I'd like to see a little more emphasis on breakfast. Say, you've got something there, Mr. Turkey. Breakfast is a most important meal. It should never be overlooked even on Thanksgiving. So here's a tip. Tomorrow morning, enjoy a breakfast of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. These giant king-size grains are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. What's more, wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Good and good for you. That's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now, now you're talking. Well, must be going now. Uh, will we be seeing you again? Sure, I'll be back next year. Goodbye. Say, it isn't every day you meet up with a talking turkey. But, fellas and girls, you can meet up with a swellest tasting breakfast tomorrow or any day. That breakfast is wheat or rice shot from guns, delicious with milk and fruit. Ask Mom to get both kinds. That's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now, to continue our story. While Bert Andrews, his own troubles forgotten, hurried to the cabin with the doctor, Sergeant Preston and King, accompanied by the constable, started following the trail left by Gill and Jeff. 
A short time later, they halted at a branch trail. Okay. Oh, yeah. This branch trail they took doesn't go through town. It goes around it. Joins the main trail to White Horse in the south of Selkirk. Yeah, I know. Snow's beginning to fall. The wind's getting stronger, Sergeant. If it develops into a blizzard, we'll have trouble following this trail. Tell me, Jim, what do you know about Bert Andrews? Say, you don't think Bert had anything to do with this case, do you? From what I know of him, he's a fine chap. Well, I didn't mean I suspect him of being implicated. The reason I ask is because the Andrews seem to be having trouble. Bert said something about a lack of funds. Well, his claim isn't any good. I do know he owes quite a bit at Mike's store. Oh, I see. Tell me, Jim, what was being shipped in that box to the Indian Creek Bank, do you know? I couldn't find out. The express agent wasn't at the office, and the clerk there didn't know. We can find that out when we get back to town. Must be of value, or those crooks wouldn't attempt murder to get it. That's right. They've had a fairly good start on us. We'd better keep going if we hope to catch them. Right, Sergeant. All right, King. I'm King! I'm King! Meantime, Gil and Jeff had avoided the town and were making their way along the trail that led to Whitehorse. Since they took turns riding the sled, their dogs made slower progress than Preston and the constable were making with their light sleds. The trail was rough and cold, and the wind and falling snow impeded the speed of the two crooks. Once more, they stopped to change places and arrest the dogs. Oh, oh there! Jeff, my turn to ride the sled. Yep, I know. But I sure hate to get out from under this robe. Getting colder by the minute. Snow's getting heavier. He sure picked a bad time to be heading for Whitehorse. It's a long, hard trip, even in fairly mild weather. We're going to have to find a place to stop before long, Gil. The dogs are being pushed so hard, they're wearing down. I know that. We've got to put a lot of distance between us and Selkirk before somebody finds that body. Just in case the constable manages to pick up our trail. Oh, there's nothing to worry about now. With this snow falling, the trail's getting well covered. And if I remember right, there's an old cabin about two miles further along the trail. We'll stop there for a while. That'll give us a chance to open up the box we took and find out what's in it. All right, get onto the sled and let's get going. All right. I'm getting colder every minute. All set. Mush! Mush, you husky! Get on! A short time later, the two crooks arrived at the deserted cabin. They spent some time starting a fire in the fireplace and in fixing something to eat. Their limbs were almost numb with the cold when they arrived, and it was some time before they thought of the box out under the robes in their sled. It was Jeff who first mentioned it. Hey, Gil, now that we're warmed up and all, we ought to open that box and see just what we got. Mm. Let's go outside to the sled and bring it in. Come on. All right. I thunder, I hate to think of having to push on any further in this kind of weather. Yeah, me too. Here's the sled. Now, let's get the box and get back inside. All right, grab onto it. I got it. Let's go. Come on. Hold out here. Take it easy. Put it on the floor now. Sure nailed up tight. How are we going to get it open? Well, let's see. Get the poker over there near the fireplace. Maybe we can get it open with that. All right. Here it is. Let's see if it'll work. It's coming. We'll soon know what's in there. Wait, wait a minute, Gil. You hear that? Hear what? I thought I heard dog bark. Not one of our dogs, either. Maybe somebody's coming. We've got to shove this box under one of the bunks. Yeah. Come on, hurry. All right. Get under there. Yeah, that'll hide it with a blanket hanging down like that. Yeah, let's sit down and wait. If anyone does come, they can't prove anything against us. Our dogs hear them now. Sounds like a dog team coming along the trail from town. I don't like it, Gil. Suppose it's a constable. So what if it is? He can't accuse us of anything. Better get our guns handy. No. Don't draw your gun. That'll make anyone suspicious. But be ready to grab it in case we have to get tough. They're stopping outside. There's two of them, Gil. Yeah, don't act nervous when they come in. I'll go. Quiet, King. May we come in? Come on, if you want to. A <laughs> couple of Mounties, eh? That's right. Come along, King. Uh, we always leave dogs outside, Mr. Maybe, but I don't. Not this dog. 
Where are you heading for? I'm Sergeant Preston. This is the constable from Selkirk. Aye. Kind of bad weather to be traveling, Sergeant. We can't let the weather keep us from our duties, mister. Who are you? My name's Gill. This is a partner of mine, Jeff. We're just sitting out the storm here before going on to Whitehorse to find a new location. Not much around Selkirk that hasn't already been prospected. The same might be said for Whitehorse, even more so. The constable and I are trailing a couple of men who robbed an express sled. Is that right? Well, I hope you get them, Sergeant. Thank you. We'll get them, don't worry. Maybe we won't have to go any further to find them. Now, see here. You can't come here accusing a couple of men like us of something without any proof. I haven't accused you yet. You haven't anything on us, like Gill says. We're minding our own business. Hey, Sergeant. What's the matter with King? He's snooping under that bunk over there. Hey, get away from there. King get away. Found something under there. I'll shoot that snooping. Oh, you what? <coughs> Suck me, will you? I'll take that. At the sound of the scuffle, King looked around. The intelligent dog saw Jeff go for his gun. I'll fix that, Mountie. With a deep-throated growl, the great husky sprang. Oh, take him off. My arm. Get him away. As King grabbed Jeff's gun arm and threw the crook to the floor, Gill weakened under the impact of Preston's forceful blow. Oh, finish this right now. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, this dog. Get him off. Down, King. Down, fella. What's them, boy? They almost took us by surprise by going for the guns. That proves they've been up to something, Sergeant. Oh, no, it doesn't prove anything. I... I went loco when I saw the sergeant sock my partner, that's all. You have no Shut right. up, you. Keep them covered, Jim. I'll see what King found under that bunk. Ah, so that's it. A box. I'll pull it out. What is it? Stolen box, Constable. It's addressed to Mr. Mason at the Indian Creek Bank. These two men are the ones we want, all right. They haven't opened the box, though it seems they just started to. We'll take them and the box back to Selkirk. Let's go. That evening, Bert and Alice were still waiting at their cabin with the wounded expressman. The doctor said he'd come back tonight, Bert. He said Frank has an even chance to live. I know, dear. I wonder if the Monties have caught up with the crooks. I hope so. With all that's been going on, I sort of forgot about our own difficulties. I ought to get into town to ask Mike about that credit, but... I don't think it'll do any good. Poor little Tommy. He hardly touched the food we had for supper. He was so set on having a Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Especially on having a turkey. Uh, I never should have mentioned such a thing. There's someone's coming. Oh, it must be the doctor coming back. Hello, Bert. Oh, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Bert. Hello, Constable. Come on in. Thanks. Come in, King. There's the box that was stolen. Yeah, but, but why did you bring it back here? There's a good reason, Bert. Did you catch the men? Yes, we caught them in the Selkirk jail. Oh. The wounded man, he's coming oh. too. Frank. Oh. Frank. Can you hear me? What, what happened? I, the constable. You were shot and robbed, Frank, but you'll be all right now. Oh, thank heaven. For a while, I was afraid he'd die. Uh, I'll be all right. Of course you will. Now, don't talk anymore. Get all the rest you can. we will soon be well again. Where's Tommy, Mrs. Andrews? But Tommy's in the other room. Could you bring him out here? I have something for him. Oh, yes, I suppose so. Tommy, are you asleep? No, I don't want to sleep. Sergeant Preston wants to see you. S Sergeant Preston? What's this all about, Sergeant? You'll find out in a moment if he comes to me now. Oh, hello, Sergeant. And, King, you did bring him back to see me. Yes, come over here a minute, Tommy. Oh, a box. What's in it? It's yours, Tommy. Top of it's loose. Open it and see what it is. Golly. <laughs> this is sure a surprise. Go ahead, son. Open it. Well, here goes. Mom, look. Cans of food and little packages and... Sergeant, there's a turkey. Yes, Tommy, your turkey, with all the trimmings for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, golly. Oh, it's wonderful. But Sergeant, I don't get this. This is We're the box a... that was stolen from the expressman. The cooks thought they'd stolen gold or something of great value. Oh, yes, but if it was going to the Indian Creek the Bank... The head of the express office was sending this as a personal gift to Mr. Mason at the bank. The express company shipped in two live turkeys to the agent in Selkirk. He had this one killed and dressed this morning to send to Mr. Mason. But if it was meant for Mr. Mason... We talked to the agent in town, and he telegraphed Mr. Mason, inviting him to Selkirk for dinner tomorrow. We told him about this box and about Tommy. 
Mason telegraphed him, and this turkey with the trimmings is a gift from both of them to you, Tommy. Just think, Daddy, a turkey. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. I'm glad you're happy, son. Bert, there are a lot of supplies on my sled, and there'll be plenty more. Also, your credit's good at Mike's whenever you care to use it. Oh, oh Bert. <laughs> Sergeant, it's, it's all so wonderful. We and Tommy are going to have a real Thanksgiving after all. Something else, Bert? Yes. As a $5,000 reward for information leading to the capture of Gil Danby and Jeff Ames, wanted for bank robbery and murder. Yeah, but what has that got to do with me? The two men we trailed and caught were Danby and Ames. Since you gave us the information that started us on their trail, I put in your name for that reward. The reward money will pay your debts and give you a new start. Oh, gosh. I, I don't know what to say. Oh, Bert. We'll have plenty to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sergeant, you and King will have to come and eat turkey with us. <laughs> yes, son, and the constable, too. Huh? Thanks, Bert. All right, the constable and King and I accept the invitation. We'll come to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Now I can say this case is closed. Hey, King? <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. It's just like Mr. Turkey says. Gobble, 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 gobble. You'll gobble up a bowl full of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat and come back for more. Yes, siree, they're the delicious, crisp, tempting cereal shot from guns. Always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original fresh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Tomorrow morning, give yourself a delicious treat of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Tomorrow, fellows and girls, one of the things we can be mighty thankful for is being Americans. We learn in our history books how American men and women fought and died so we can be free and safe. Let's show our thanks by being good Americans. Freedom is everybody's job, and that includes you and me. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Barbary Gang. By the time I learned that the Barbary Gang was planning a quarter of a million dollar robbery, I was their prisoner. It was only through King that I could warn the force, and only through him I could hope to save my own life. I knew that the gang was ready to commit murder. What chance did one man have against 20? Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker...